Hi, I'm Josh Ozarski for The Manual, and I'm here at Portland Knife House. This is Aitan Zayas, who is the owner, the proprietor, and resident knife expert. And today he's gonna show us how to sharpen a knife the right way on a whetstone. It's a whetstone, we use water, which makes it wet, but even if you use oil, it's a whetstone, that's just what that style is called. Sharpening stones is synonymous with whetstone these days. And this has zero edge on it, so we're starting from scratch. Yeah. I, I couldn't cut myself if I wanted to with this. Do you ever mm -hmm. cut yourself? I mean, you're using all these knives and they're so sharp. It's constantly. You do, even at, even at your level, you constantly cut I, yourself. I am put together with super glue. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Good. let's see how it's done. Okay, so when people start out, I usually tell them to use Sharpie. And I'll take a Sharpie and I'll mark my edge. This tells you exactly what you're doing. So if I'm trying to find my angle here, I'll do a few strokes and look at what I did. So I can see that my marker's gone here. It looks like I still have a marker on my tip, so I need to adjust this style is, uh, it's kind of a hybrid Japanese style, and it's the most efficient way that you can sharpen. This way, or if you go away, we call that, you know, Boy Scout style. It works, Why but it it's Boy not Scout very style? effective, because that's how you learn the Boy Scouts. <laughs> From what I've told, I was never in the Boy Scouts, but, you know, that's what I call it, at least. So, <laughs> and so this is a way to sharpen a knife, but it's very slow. And what I'm doing here is it looks like I'm just going back and forth but I'm actually, uh, the pressure is applied on the way out and released on the way back. Knife never leaves the stone, my fingers never leave the knife. And I'm sharpening in little sections. Like brushing your teeth. Concentrating, yep. But I'm concentrating all my effort on where I want to sharpen. So, once you've established your angle, then we sharpen one side at a time. And the reason that we only sharpen one side at a time is because we're looking for something called a burr. The burr is when I know when to stop sharpening. So if you're looking at sharpening at its most basic, you're taking a rounded edge, okay. and then you're grinding metal off both planes so they meet at a perfect, or as perfect as you can get it. Okay. Then when you do the opposite side, there's two ways of doing it. Um, you can use the same hand and just flip it over, and just do exactly the same thing but opposite. And then again, you're, the pressure is always on the away stroke. And when I feel the burr, and it's even, then all I do is I have my edge now. I basically, I sharpen one side till it crossed over, then I sharpen the other side till it crossed over. And, then and you're now done. I technically have, well, I'm, I'm not done yet because I technically, I have that edge, but I still have the burr on it. So I still have all that damaged steel that's just sitting on it and, and not letting me cut anything. A sharp knife should be smooth on both sides and just grab you when you feel it straight on. So what I'm doing now is I'm switching technique to, it's called the stropping method. And so this is what they used to do with a piece of leather? To, um, we're going to do it on leather afterwards, but this is the same technique. And also, I'm going away, and leather is a good practice, because if you went forward on leather, you would just cut it up. Okay, so this woke up paper, but it's not cutting the way I'm happy. So this is already probably sharper what, 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 than... What's wrong with it? That well, looks pretty good to me. It was a little noisy, and if I look at the paper, I see a little bit of fiber on it, which I don't like. So. The, that tells me that my edge is not as clean as it could be. So this is already sharper than maybe 99% of the knives in Portland, but it's not up to our standards, okay. and it can get better. So this is leather, and then we have a, a diamond spray that we put on it. It's a very, very fine abrasive. You know, I would rather have a sharp $30 knife than a dull $400 knife. So that's the idea, is maintenance is key. That's, a, that, that's you know? a, a, less, a life lesson. Yeah. One thing that you always see cooks do Maybe they did the stone and then the and then the strop mm -hmm. or whatever, but then they always take the the thing and go like this and like this. What does that do? And do you have to do that at home? If you use stones, I generally tell people that they don't have to use steels. They so don't have to use. They them. don't have to use steels because pretty much if if you use stones properly, anytime you use one of these, this is going to set you back. So when well, you, when you do want to use these, because it's better than not using anything. All right. So then that is the basic. Mm -hmm fundamental, mm -hmm. bare bones, sharpening skills that a person needs mm -hmm. to keep a good knife mm -hmm. the way it should be. All right, Eitan yeah. Zayas, right. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you for can having I buy, me. Can I buy your knives on the computer? Uh, not right now, we only do in-store sales, so you have to be in Phoenix or Portland, but you can always give us a call. All right, sounds mm -hmm. good. I'm Josh Ozerski mm -hmm. for The Manual.